So, as the Joe and Hunter Biden scandalabra deepens and widens, what should we make of these new allegations? Joining us now to answer those questions and more, Fox News contributor and George Washington University law professor Jonathan Turley. Professor Turley, welcome to the show. I feel like there was a lot of Thank news you. around Hunter Biden, particularly this week. And of course, this is a Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, as I call it, scandalabra. But walk us through what really struck you, what we should be looking for. Well, you know, this is a city that floats on leaks. Uh, there's lots of things that come over the transom. So you often have to make a sort of gut check on how much credibility and weight to give something. On that scale, the types of, of stories I give the most weight to are the ones from whistleblowers directly to Congress. The reason is that those are individuals who know that they can be criminally charged for lying to investigators. So this isn't just something coming over the transom to the Washington Post. It's not some anonymous source uh, that a reporter is citing. It is someone who has met with investigators and is subject to that penalty. So you have to take it seriously. And there is this sharp disconnect, right? When we had a whistleblower in the first Trump impeachment, the media really went, you know, full board into this uh, this story. Um, they're showing a lot more skepticism here. But we have to just learn the details. But one of the reasons, Kellyanne, that this is so serious is because of what we know already. You know, the Biden family has been known for influence peddling for years. Now, influence peddling is one of the sort of cottage industries of Washington, as you know. Uh, but the Bidens really set a new standard uh, in terms of how much money uh, is being traced to family members. Well, there's no question about that. And I think Chairman Comer is doing a fabulous job in at least keeping us all up to speed on what he can without divulging confidences. It really struck me, Professor Turley, that Hunter Biden hired a new lawyer, Abby Lowell, and apparently this is what ruffled a lot of feathers at the White House. Abby Lowell's known as um, more aggressive, maybe, than the lawyers that Bob Bauer at the White House and others had put together okay. for Hunter Biden. I think uh, Kevin Cork's reporting, the Axios report makes very clear, clashes, going rogue, they're upset. Look, this White House needs to reelect an unpopular president and an unpopular vice president. They don't need Hunter Biden's uh, scandals in the way. But tell us what you think of the hiring of Abby Lowell and, and how that affects this moving forward. Well, I know, Abby, what, what was interesting, and you're one of the most sophisticated political figures in the city, so it'd be interesting to get your take on this, but I, uh, I was surprised when The Post first reported a meeting of a new team for Hunter Biden that includes people that have been supporting him financially. And the whole thrust of the, the story was that they were going to go with a scorched earth campaign, that they were going to um, go aggressive. And what was weird about that is it had to come from those individuals. This was a leak from a relatively small number of people. They wanted uh, witnesses to know that they were going to go after witnesses. And Abby Lowell issued a letter saying that the IRS should investigate some of the critics of Hunter Biden, that there should be criminal investigations with potential witnesses. That's getting uncomfortably close to the line uh, if those lawyers then reach out to witnesses with that type of heavy message. Uh, you can really sort of trip some wires, particularly with a congressional investigation now in the field. Professor Trelli, let's shift gears just a little bit and go back to this, I think, bombshell of a revelation in these emails that you had two former CIA chiefs colluding to provide Joe Biden with a talking point for a presidential debate. The last debate in Nashville, late October 2020, that famous line from Joe Biden where he says, talking about Hunter Biden's laptop is, quote, garbage. And he quotes that 50 Intel officials have said it has the markings of Russian disinformation. We know that that's all wrong now. It was all a lie. But it really struck me that I saw, speaking of congressional investigations, both John Brennan and uh, another are going to have to go and testify in front of Congress. James Clapper are going to have to go and testify in front of Congress about the weaponization of the government. Um, can you clue us into that a little bit? I, I think people felt it was unfair, but now it actually has some legs. 
Well, it does. I mean, it, this, there's a curious thing about this letter, right? Because we do know it's false. It's soon after this allegation came out, the American intelligence came out with a statement that there's no evidence that there was Russian disinformation or, or intelligence efforts here. But you had these 51 experts that wanted to get this out right before the campaign. And now we're learning pretty much what was presumed, that this was an effort of the Biden campaign uh, to give him this talking point. And yes. earlier, as you know, Morrell basically said that the trigger for this uh, was now Secretary of State Blinken and that he gave him this uh, initial disinformation line. And yet everyone involved says they did nothing wrong. Not the organizer, Morrell, not the trigger, Blinken, not the signatories, not the media that ran with it. No one's taking responsibility for what was just a really unbelievable political yes. sort of trick. And it, it sort of made the public look like chumps because it happened right before the election. And it could have made a difference. Well, Professor Turley, polling showed that 17 percent in six or seven key swing states said that they would have changed their vote away from Biden if they thought that this laptop and its contents were actually real. These folks hid behind intelligence and national security to make a political point, in fact, to provide a, quote, talking point in a debate that email makes clear. I think that's incredibly important. I want to thank you so much for walking us through two or three very uh, thorny issues this week that came to a head in Washington, D.C. Professor Trilley, thank you.